Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today I will be talking about Chris Herndon and why you should not give up on Chris Herndon just yet. Before we get started, just wanted to mention you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the Just Jets podcast and the Just Jets Clips channel link down in the description below. Okay, so you've probably heard this before. Don't sell your Chris Herndon stock and I am very much a believer in that. I know about the drops last year. He was not good last year, and hand up, I thought he was going to break out after pretty much being not a non-factor in 2019 due to suspension and injuries. Yes, I had him for over 700 receiving yards last year. I think he had, yeah, 287. I was way off, hand up, wrong. But I am back on that train again, and let me explain why. First, let's talk about what the new Jets offense is going to do. In San Francisco, they run uh, their offense with multiple tight ends on the field pretty often 12 personnel which is something that I was begging the Jets to do last year but they almost never did they used 11 personnel 76 percent of the, it was like three quarters of the time the Jets were running their offense out of 11 personnel when you had Chris Herndon and Ryan Griffin who had a pretty solid 2019 season who the Jets used basically neither of them for a majority of the season I was I, I very much so wanted two tight ends on the field this new Jets offense will do that so I think he's going to have every opportunity to prove that he can be the guy and I think talent wise he can the reason why so many people are excited about Herndon is because what he did in his rookie year, yes, it's a long time ago now in 2018, but the final 11 games of that season, he put up 455 yards and four touchdowns. Over a 16-game season, that's 662 yards and six touchdowns, 41 yards per game. So he was really solid and a nice target for Sam Darnold that year. Now, for the majority, as I just said, of 2020, he wasn't very much so used. He only had 287 yards on the season. Now, part of that is because Adam Gase doesn't use tight ends very often. More on that in a second here. But in the final three games, he gave you some pretty desirable numbers. 145 yards and two touchdowns. That's 773 yards paced out over a 16-game season. Can he do that again? Now, with the amount of weapons the Jets have on offense, yes, I know it's crazy to say that, but it's true. I don't know if he's going to hit that 700 yards, but I think he's going to be an effective tight end and be a good receiving tight end option for the New York Jets this year. Since Adam Gase was a head coach from 2016 with Miami all the way through the 2020 season, let's take a look at how his top tight ends have done in the receiving game. So last year, Herndon led the way for all of tight ends with 287 receiving yards. Woof. 2019, it was Ryan Griffin with 320 receiving yards leading the way for tight ends. To 2018, Mike Giusecki. Yeah, he was drafted as a rookie that year. Only had 202 receiving yards. That led the way for tight ends. Since Adam Gase has left, by the way, and we're going to get into more guys who have thrived since Adam Gase left in just a couple of seconds here. But since for Mike Giusecki specifically, in 2019, 570 yards. In 2020, 703 yards. Is part of that progressing from a rookie to you know getting his footing in the league yes is part of it also adam gase's inability to utilize the tight end position also yes both things can be true and probably are true in 2017 it was the corpse of julius thomas at 388 receiving yards and 2016 it was Deion sims with 256 so 388 is the most amount of receiving yards that an adam gase tight end has had over the last five years that is absolutely insane how criminally underutilized that position is by Gase. So sure, part of this is also on Herndon. He did not do enough to take a step forward. The drops were bad and no doubt about it. But to sit here and say that, oh, he's 100% without a doubt a, a, a lost cause, I can't do that. And since he's cheap on his rookie deal for one more year, you give him that shot. And if it doesn't work out this year, you move on. If it does, then you think about re-signing him. That's completely fair. And like I said, I was going to give you a run through of guys who thrived after Adam Gase. Ryan Tanhill's the obvious one. Everyone points to him when he gets gone to Tennessee. Mike Jacecki we talked about. Kenyon Drake, who pretty much did nothing in the two years or three years he played with Adam Gase, turned into a reliable running back, had over 800 rushing yards the two years after. That Adam Gase left Jarvis Landry. Yes, he put up good numbers with Adam Gase in the slot, but I think he's been utilized so much better and is a better, well-rounded player at this point in his career after matter after Adam Gase. 
Damian Williams, the, the Miami Dolphins just did not use him. He was a, a, a very good running back option for the Kansas City Chiefs. And Devontae Parker has turned into a really good receiver who, yeah, he flashed maybe a little bit in his first year with Adam Gase, but the, the two years after that in 17 and 18 didn't do anything anything with the Miami Dolphins and each one of those guys have carved out a nice NFL career and guess what Adam Gase isn't in the league anymore and for good reason yes I understand maybe I'm biased because I was saying last year how I thought this guy was going to have a breakout year this is the year I am doubling down on it in 2021 the 49er style of offense that the Jets are going to be running this year I think is going to help Chris Herndon get targets get reps I think he's going to be solid. Again, is he going to be an 800, 900,000 yard receiver? I'm not ready to go that high. Can he be an effective t starting tight end in that 500, 600, maybe 700 yard range? Yeah, I think he could be. And I would really like to see both him and Kenny Aboa on the field at the same time. That would be fun. And yes, I think undrafted free agent Kenny Aboa can make the team as a receiving tight end because I think his skill set is that high. The Jets seem to view him as a fourth round guy. I myself had him as, I think, a fifth rounder, somewhere in that range. So, I mean, the Jets are going to have an interesting looking tight end room. And I think they'll actually be utilized because Adam Gates didn't have a clue how to utilize that position. So let me know. Am I nuts? Or are you on the Chris Herndon train as well? Let me know in the comments down below or on social media. Please make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll talk to you next time.